we just got pounded with a bunch of water. Mike, and explain it. <laughs> I'm putting shorts on because I'm walking around naked, totally soaked. We went to town. This is like the day after the hurricane. Clear, calm skies for like 24 hours. We go to the bar, we have some drink with some people. It starts raining a little bit. And we're like, eh, it's raining a little bit. You know, we left our hatches open, whatever. And wow, the rain got so heavy, we decided we're gonna leave. We got our hatches open. We just came all the way here. We stopped a couple times because the engine was giving us trouble. Yeah, the, the bay was full of some kind of seaweed. It wasn't sarcasm, it was something else. This floating seaweed, all of a sudden the whole bay was covered. Our engine kept getting tangled up in it. We were fighting that to come in. We had to keep bailing our boat out while we're motoring to not life. Like there's so much rain that our dinghy kept filling up. So. We get back here and we're putting things away. I mean, I have not seen this much water. It's crazy. Like we just went through a hurricane that hardly produced anything but some like misty rainy days. And now it's just downpour, like buckets and pails of water. It's like standing under a waterfall. There's so much rain. It is just breaking now. The sun's starting to peak. That was just crazy. We had our hatches open. It hasn't barely rained here in months. Lesson learned. <laughs> it could rain anytime, even when it doesn't rain for months. When it rains, it rained hard. Like the dinghy fell, filled up with like a foot of water in the drive we came here. It was crazy. And after the hurricane left, there was just no wind at all. So it got really, really hot here. And then like a day later, after complete calm conditions, all of a sudden the temperature dropped and here's all this beautiful rain washing everything away. All our laundry here is getting washed, the boat's getting washed. Yeah, it was a good little downpour. This is more action than we had with the hurricane. Today we're going to Puerto Plata, so we're gonna see if we can get to a river that's um, in there. We're gonna run some errands as well. We want you to join us. Might be fun. There is so much water from the rain two days ago so we've seen a, like a lot of water on the road so we want to make sure it's not as deep so we can go through it. So I guess it's good to go. So we've arrived, uh, Rio Azul. I think it's supposed to be about 30 minutes off-road according to Google, but it was about two hours because of the condition of the road. It's very steep, very rough, lots of little rivers you cross that are really wet. And once we've got here and seen it, we are not going for a swim. Um, back home, we call this the Rupier River because you can't see more than a few inches through the water. There's a few people swimming here. Not really interested in getting in the water. I, I'm really hoping we find a different way back because that was a long off-road drive. So that's it for our adventure today. What a waste of time, people. So that river is supposed to be called the Blue River, but from blue, it had nothing. So I guess because of the rain, it stirred up all the gravel from the mountains and all the soil and it just made it 
brutier colors. Not very nice to swim in something you don't see through. Yeah, all the way here was very bad roads, like 100% off road. We're seeing more asphalt than when we came back. Hopefully it's all the way like that until we get to Sisoa. It was a good experience. I mean, we saw a lot of cows. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah. We saw a lot of cows. A lot of cows, people. Cow. Uh, I was just wrapping the steering wheel, doing a French twist. It's basically a whole bunch of half hitches with this twine. I think it's called a sign twine. It's very, very hard and stiff. Uh, it's easy to knot, but it's hard to keep all the ropes tight together. So I've been using this little key that's for our water tanks to push them together as I go, keeping all the, the rope links tight. It's about four days of, of tying knots as tight as you can. And uh, this is my last half an inch. Hello everyone, we are in Luperon and we're gonna show you one of the treasures of Luperon, locally known as the blowhole. So we are not really anchored, we're tied up to a big root. And there's a couple of paths here. Look at these giant coral reef rocks. And then the staircase. This is literally in the middle of nowhere. There's nothing really around here. There's no houses. There's only a, a dirt road and where they started construction on a couple of homes. And it looks like that's been abandoned for a while. The abandoned construction project building a neighborhood. Amazingly, the sign doesn't look that old. I guess because it's printed on glass. Well, it's not even printed. That's a uh, three-dimensional kind of... Because it's the first time we've been trying to look for the blowhole here in Luperon. You just have to walk all the way to the number one villa and then take this path. As we're walking along this path, start hearing water underneath us. There's just these little cracks. But if you listen, 